All right, so let's look at a couple examples of how we can start to calculate these different concentrations. We're gonna be practicing a bunch of these. Uh, I just wanna show you a couple. Uh, there's a couple more on the slides with answers on there, so feel free to try those as well. Um, we're gonna be working on some additional ones coming off the handout as well. But again, just wanna make sure we're doing okay on these. Make sure that if we got any questions, we're, we're seeing some good examples as we're working through. Uh, so I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna disappear so that it is kind of cleaner and easier to see what's going on here. Uh, so cool, let's go ahead and solve this problem as we think about our molality of a solution prepared by using 32 degrees of calcium chloride and we're using 271 grams of water. So we're gonna to need to first know kind of our formula for molality. Well, molality, if you remember from our previous slide, uh, oops, sorry, it was, come on, come on, Penn, you can do it. Molality equaled our moles of solute per kilograms of solvent. And so we need to get a couple of different data points here to be able to solve this. First thing we're gonna need to know is what the moles of our solute is. In this case, it was calcium chloride. Uh, so we had 32.0 grams of that calcium chloride. Uh, we look on the periodic table, we find its molar mass for calcium chloride. It comes out to 110.98 grams per every one mole. Uh, when we do this division, we end up getting the total number of moles of our solute to come out to 0.288 moles. Cool, we're halfway there. Uh, all we need now is the kilograms of water. We could set up a conversion factor and change grams into kilograms. We want one kilograms, a thousand grams. So basically we need to divide by a thousand or we move our decimal over three spots, whichever makes most sense to you based on your chemistry experience. Uh, but now I think we've got the two data points that we need. We know we're trying to solve for the molality. We need our moles of solute divided by our kilograms of solvent, which was the 271 gram. We had, excuse me, kilograms. It's kilograms now. We're gonna do that for a kilogram. Uh, looks like we got three sig figs and three sig figs. We can divide this out. We've got a molality of 1.06 molal, which is temperature independent for our calcium chloride solution. Cool. Uh, another example for you. As we look at our sample problems here. This one is gonna be a little more involved in terms of calculations and what needs to happen. Um, so the density, we're told the density and the molality, or excuse me, the molarity, excuse me, difference. We've got a 1.05 molar brine solution, which is a sodium chloride solution. Uh, for those folks that work with kind of grilling and or smoking, a brine solution is usually what we treat our different meats in before we actually go about uh, uh, cooking them, oftentimes used to keep the moisture in when we're doing our grilling, makes for juicier, if you will, uh, juicier steaks and chicken. Uh, we know the molar molarity of our brine solution and we know the density of our brine solution. Uh, assuming you have a one liter solution, calculate the molality. Again, we're looking for molality, which was our moles per kilogram. Uh, this one's a little trickier. Usually we'd say, well, okay, if it's a one liter solution, then that means we've got one kilogram of water, right? Well, that's assuming the density of the pure water and it's not gonna be pure water because we've mixed some stuff in. So let's go back to what we do know and go from there. We know the molarity, molarity, big M, equals moles of solute per liters of solution. Okay, well, we know it's a one liter solution. We know, we know the molarity is 1.04. 1.05 molar, it's gonna equal some amount of moles, which we don't know. We've got a one liter solution, technically 1.00 liters for three sig figs. Um, cool, that tells us, that tells us that for this particular solution, we've got 1.05 moles of our solute. Okay, well, we look at the periodic table, we know for sodium chloride, sodium chloride has a molar mass of 58.44 grams, 0.44 grams. So if we do this math, we can actually figure out how many of this total solution, how many grams are actually coming from the salt that we dissolved in there. Well, it turns out to be, ooh, sig figs, 61.4 grams of knackle, sorry, sodium chloride. Okay, well, how does that help us? Oh, we know the density. That's our other data piece. We know that density, 
equals the total mass divided by the total volume. Well, the, the volume was one liter. And we know the density in milliliters. Ah, watch your units. Okay. Um, so if it was 1.090 grams for one milliliter, if we multiply both by 1,000, we would get it in liters. Well, that means that the density is going to equal 1,090 grams per every one liter. Well, we have one liter, right? So we know that the total mass of this solution is 1,090 grams. Of that total mass, oops, sorry, running in my little symbol there. But of that total mass, 61.4 grams was from the salts. So if we subtract, sorry, I'm trying to mark this up a little bit, we can get the total mass, which you mean just the mass of the water. Remember that this total mass here, this total mass of the solution based on the density is the salt plus the water. Here's the mass just from the salt. So if we subtract those, we can get mass of just the water. So when we subtract those, I'm gonna kind of sneak it up here in this empty space. That means we got a mass of 1,028 grams of water, which would be equal to 1.028 kilograms. Well, all right, we've done all this. Let's, let's bag it up here. Cause I think we have everything we need, right? We know the moles of our particles, right? Moles of solute. There's our moles of solute. We also know, sorry, let me grab, let me do a different color for you. We also know now the kilograms of our, just our solvent. And so if we actually take all that, sorry, if we take all that, we know the moles was 1.05 moles of solute. We divide by our 1.028, sorry, get my decimal line, kilograms, gives us a molality then of 1.02, 1 1.02 molal. This one was a little more involved because we had to work with the information that we had to figure out what was missing. Sorry, I need to watch my, my spacing there a little bit. So 1.02 molal. Cool, let's look at a couple more examples here in the next video uh, coming specifically from the handout that we are practicing on.